everybody, Kira with Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool component for a necklace or even some wall art. So we're going to start, I have bronze primo clay and I'm going to make it into an elongated teardrop shape after conditioning it so that I can then press it into my mold firmly. It's going to overflow a little bit because these molds are pretty soft and I like to overfill these. It's a little bit harder with all the um, parts and pieces of the wings to really just fill it without overfilling it. So here I'm just taking a nice sharp flexible blade and shaving back the excess carefully. And once I have the excess shaved off, I'll just use my fingertips to smooth and push the clay back in along all the edges. And you just want to make sure that it's firmed in there really well, that it is full, that you didn't shave it back too far. So there I noticed that I didn't have enough clay in the bottom of tip of the wing. It's a funny little camera glitch that I had there. Sorry about that. But once I have it all ready, I like to take these molds and flip them over onto my Teflon sheet, which will release the clay, but it's a little bit sticky. So if you press it nice and firmly down onto there, it allows you to demold it without having to grab it. So your molds that have a lot of different shapes like this work really well. Next I'm going to take the long mold and I will fill that one too. And that one has some cutouts in it so you're definitely going to want to overfill and then shave this one back. So what I'll do here is take a nice big log, roll it out like a snake. Because there's more mold in the middle, I will leave it thicker in the middle and thinner on the edges. And then just start pressing it in at one end. These molds are real flexible, which makes them really nice for demolding, but sometimes a little tricky for the actual molding part. So you can see that I use all of my fingers as I'm going down to keep it in place as I move up the mold. So you see here I'm just using my fingers to press it and then I'm going to gently shave it all back and use my fingers to clean up and push the clay into the actual mold and get it off of those cutouts because those are going to create some shapes that I can use. My intention is to dangle some beads and chains off of it later. I'm not going to show making the full jewelry piece because the tutorial could get really long and um, you know I just want to show you how to create this molded piece and then color it because to me that's the fun part. So here I'm just continuing to clean up before I demold this piece. And now I'll do the same technique, just flipping it over onto my Teflon sheet, pressing it down so that I can gently remove the mold because this mold is complex and it has lots of little um, parts and pieces and I don't want to rip any of them off. And the mold itself is fairly flexible. So if you do it this way, I find that it's a lot easier to keep it all in one piece and not distort it or, you know, mess it up. So you can see there are a couple places where it's stretched a little but that's okay. So now I'm just going to arrange my wings and then pick this off the Teflon and figure out the best way to put these two pieces together. So I'm not pressing very hard because I still have to color these with some powdered pigments and Perlex powders. I'm just kind of deciding on an arrangement right now. 
So I'm not pressing very hard, I'm just kind of checking for alignment, deciding if this is really where I want it, because it's my piece, you know, I can do whatever I want. And I'm combining two molds, so I really want them to look nice together. Now I'm going to go for my Pearl X powders. I've got antique gold and antique bronze. So I like to use my fingertip. And you all know my trick by now of keeping my powders upside down in my drawer so that the cap becomes a good little palette. Um, and I like to tap out color into the cap and then touch it to the clay because I find if I go straight from the jar to the clay I get big clumps of powder all over everything and I want it to only be where I want it to be so I like to do what I'm doing right here which is grab a little tap it off into the cap and then go for my clay and you'll see me here switch from the antique gold to the antique bronze and just touch all the parts that I want to have some metallic on. And now I'm going to get a tile because next I'll be baking. So I'm just going to transfer my composition onto a tile. And I'm going to set it up the way I thought about doing it before. And now I'm going to really press the clay together so that it will stick to itself when it bakes so that I have this curved piece on the bottom still with all the holes in it and see there I'm closing that end piece because I'm I want to dangle things from it all the way around from one side to the other so I'm gonna close up those little curly cues on the end and all this project is really about is changing a mold to suit you because you can buy molds and then end up kind of having your stuff all continue to look the same if you just mold a piece and bake it. So if you change it up a little bit each time, then you can really personalize it and combine them and change the shapes. It's fun. So now I'm going to go ahead and bake. Don't forget to take your knitting needle or tool of choice and make whatever holes you need to make. Um, for hanging before you go ahead and bake it. And as I was looking at this, I thought, hmm, I really should put some crystals on here. And I keep my Swarovski crystals in a little case um, near my work table so that I can pull them out and use them when I want to. And these are, I think this color is called Volcano. It's got lots of like uh, yellow, pink, and purple in it, so the, the crystals are all different colors. So this is my picker-upper tool, which is just a piece of blue poster fun tack on the end of an unsharpened pencil, and I use it to help pick up and place stones. So I'm going to put them on all these little sort of bead areas. And then I use the end of a knitting needle to poke them all the way into the clay so that they don't fall out after they bake. So I'm just going to go ahead and I think place five stones, one on each of the sides of the central flower, one in the middle of the flower, and then two off to the um, other sides of the wings. Because there's like four little ball areas on this mold and I just thought a stone would look good in each one of them. And then I've got another one that's a pointy back stone that I'm going to put in the middle of the flower. And it's in a contrasting color. It's more of a yellow color. So I thought that that might be nice to put one that was a different color in the middle. Just press it in and then make sure that all of your stones are set and that they have a little bit of clay poking up around them, holding them in so that after you bake, they're not going to fall out. If they do fall out, you can super glue them back in. I use Gorilla brand um, super glue and I really like that but I try to avoid it by poking them in first. Then when you've got it all done you can go ahead and bake this so that we can get to the coloring part. So bake it for half an hour. I'm going to finish this project off with 
patina paints from Ranger. I really like these. They work really well on polymer clay. And I keep some lint-free rags around in my studio. You're going to need something like this. And I prefer to use Q-tips rather than paint brushes for this product because um, it will wreck a paintbrush. So I've got, let's see, I don't know if I'll use all these, but I've got Rust, Clay, Marine, and Ruby. Those are the colors that I pulled out to play with. Marine because it's sort of got a patina color to it. And Ruby for the flower. So they have a ball shaker. You want to shake them up good and then you'll want to use a piece of wax paper or your Teflon sheet or something because you want to pour a little out and then grab it with your brush or toothpick or whatever you're going to use and then dab it on and I like to quickly take it off the high points with my rag. So you can pretty precisely place it and a little goes a very long way with this paint. So I'm gonna kind of, whoops, yeah, I'm losing the tips of my wings here. I, I think I was too hasty pulling it out of the oven, but I'm gonna put a little of this up on the tips of some of these wings, and you can use your fingers. This will wash off your hands, but it won't wash out of a brush really well. So I tend to Q-tip and finger paint a lot when I'm using these paints. So that's enough of the pink called Ruby. And then I think I'm going to get out this rust color. It's kind of a bright orange rust. Flip my tooth, my Q-tip around and put some of this color in and around the uh, edges of things where rust might form. And just, I'm kind of just dabbing it off with my finger. I find getting a little messy with it is actually fine and it works well to sort of use your hand to, like your fingerprints add a little to it when you're trying to rough it up because I, I prefer to I guess rough up the product and not just let it sit right on top of whatever I'm doing. I think the texture looks better. So just keep your rag around and it dries very fast. So you want to work fast and see I'm just using my fingertip texture to kind of I just, there's something about just letting it sit right on the surface that I don't like because it's super bright, very, very bright. And when I'm doing something that's aged looking, I don't want this bright paint sort of just hanging out on top of everything. So my fingertip pushes it back and keeps it from being just this bright, shiny paint. All right, and then I think I'll try some of this marine color, which is sort of a aged patina kind of a color. Since we're working with something that's mostly copper, copper and bronze, this is a kind of realistic looking patinaed color. There was a little clog in that tip, so I've got a lot of product on my sheet here. That's okay. So just be careful if you have a big overflow like that, because I don't want it to get everywhere. Definitely not on the tops. I might even do a little sort of shaping to get more of a point. And get it around the edges. I'm 
in the cracks. So the molds that I'm working with today are part of our combo deal this week at Polymer Clay TV. You can get all of them together for one low price. There's actually four molds included and they're four molds that go well together. Like, you know, you might look at these long molds and say, how am I going to use this? And here we have an example of how you might combine a couple of molds to get a completely different look. So this patina product, I mean, you really, you just kind of keep going with it until you're, until you feel done. And work real fast. And it just helps to bring out the details. And I'll super glue that later, or maybe put a little backer of polymer clay on it and throw this back in the oven because I have tested the patina paints and you can, once they're dry, you can put them in the oven and bake them with your clay. So no worries there about losing a piece of clay or something like what happened to me here with my wing tip just broke off as I was pulling it out of the oven and uh, messing with it. It's just a lesson to me because I tend to be impatient. I want my clay to be done so I can play with it. So see, just smattering on little sort of dabs of this and then wiping it back with my finger really adds to this piece. Makes it look like it, it patinaed naturally over time with all the different layers of powders and colored patina paints. I'll take a nice close-up picture of this when I'm done because it really does look gorgeous. So my plan here is to take this and hang beads from these holes, which is why I liked this um, sort of open work of this particular mold. So there'll be beads hanging and then I put the um, four holes up here because I'm envisioning a little chain dangle here and then this being the actual where I connect the necklace part. So have tons of fun making your combined molded pieces. It really gives something new and different to your to your artwork so that you're not just you know taking a mold plopping it down and making something out of it. When you combine them together you get a completely different look. Thanks for hanging with me on Polymer Clay TV today. Have a great week.